Here, it's just arrived in the last few minutes. He's explaining to people how they're going to get support from the Ukrainian government in the coming days, that they're going to be bringing humanitarian aid, uh, supplies and support into the town here. And uh, the situation for people here is really difficult. There's no electricity, there's no gas. So they've had a very difficult time just in terms of surviving under the Russians. But what's happened in this town over the past few days as the Russians, the past couple of weeks, as the Russians knew that they were going to pull out there was widespread looting vehicles looted we've been to the bank here it's completely ransacked and looted the police station here we're told was used as a base of torture that people would be taken in here and tortured and if they want to extract more information then they would take them the 45 kilometers on to to her son i spoke to a young girl here and, I, and i'm telling you a lot of things here because everybody wants to talk everyone you speak to at the roadside here wants to talk uh, this young lady 15 years old she told me her mother confirmed her story that in the past or the last few days of the russians being here she was taken away kidnapped a hood put over her head she told her she was afraid of being raped she was only released yesterday this is a town that is only just now getting to grips with the idea of liberation of what it means to be free of what it means not to have a uh, russian rule here um, and i think people are in all of it, we've seen people on the streets meeting friends they haven't seen for a long time, hugging each other uh, in tears. But I think also there's a sense of, okay, um, what's going to happen now? Yeah, Nick Robertson found that report, that contrast of like the celebration in the streets and also, as he said, coming to grips with what they've lived through, been through, and now their new reality is just remarkable. Also happening right now, President Biden on the world stage once again speaking moments ago at the UN's climate summit in Egypt. The president touting his administration's efforts to combat the climate crisis and laying out what he sees is at stake. The climate crisis is about human security, economic security, environmental security, NASA security, and the very life of the planet. Joining me right now, CNN's chief climate correspondent, Bill Weir, and global affairs analyst, Susan Glasser. She's a staff writer with The New Yorker, of course. Bill, what did you think of, of the president's remarks that we just heard? This is a high wire act. You know, especially since the way the world has changed just since Glasgow. The yeah. energy crisis through the war we just saw uh, there as well is, is shaking everything up. The appetite to move beyond oil and gas has dried up in some countries, even like Costa Rica back in one of those pledges. But he went there to be adamant about we're meeting our goals and we are kicking in. We are uh, picking up the check, a moral check, uh, for developing countries that are suffering the brunt of the pollution that much of which we caused historically. Pledged $11 billion a year by 2024 for those developing nations. The Inflation Reduction Act will get us most of the way to the pledges of, uh, that he's talking about, but so much has to happen in terms of clean tech. And what's happening in China now is breaking that down, those supply chains. I do want to ask you about that, but first, so let me bring you in on this because Part of all of this, he's heading to G. He's heading to the G20 after he is in Egypt, and just the images coming out of Ukraine right now. This is clearly a really important moment and going to be a huge topic during this week-long trip for the president. What do you make of the Ukrainian advances in Kherson that we're seeing? This seems, it seems, both strategically and symbolically significant in this long run. Absolutely. Of course, it's, it's it's really powerful to see, uh, you know, what, what it's like to be liberated from the Russians. It certainly gives the lie to the Russian propaganda uh, in this war when you see how much Ukraine has not only fought for its uh, independence, its very existence, but how uh, its citizens are, you know, overwhelmed with joy to be free. Uh, from Russia, and I, you know, I think of what we've seen before as uh, the Russians have been pushed back elsewhere in Ukraine, uh, and I worry that we will hear more about atrocities and war crimes and, you know, torture and beatings. But at the same time, it is strategically important to, first of all, on the international stage, it is a reaffirmation of uh, Biden's strategy at a time when he's heading in to a crucial meeting uh, with the leader of the so I think it, it will give more impetus uh, to the coalition supporting Ukraine. So let's talk more about the things that we're talking about as well as part of this entire week long trip that the president's going on. First, focusing on climate, and then he's going to be focusing on, well, Ukraine is going to be a huge topic as he heads to G20. We were talking about China. Can you talk, what is, how important, 
critical is the cooperation between the United States and China to really make any 